This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I'm gonna just go look at my little vegetable garden and uh, then I'm gonna go look at the sugar apples because there's sugar apples there, but I haven't really been on top of them. There's not like huge amounts, but there's, there's fruit. So I'm gonna do that. I don't know why this camera has trouble when I do that. It's so beautiful here. <clears throat> it's, just, it's just really, it's turned into paradise here for us. And um, the fruit is coming, it's coming. <clears throat> The wood ducks. So I put a bunch of seeds in here yesterday. I ended up, come on camera. I ended up, uh, it's like a 20 foot by five foot or three foot, I guess, area. And I mix like uh, aged, Zebu manure that I soaked in water, rainwater overnight, and then crumbled up and then mixed in the soil. And then I, yesterday I added about a five gallon bucket of fresh Zebu manure that I worked into the soil. Didn't walk on the soil, but worked it into the soil, pitchfork deep, and then put the seeds in there. <clears throat> You could like harvest uh, produce um, 30 days after doing that, mixing the fresh manure in, into the earth. This isn't stuff for, this is just for our kitchen, for, for me to practice growing and show, show what it does to a dry farm, because we're a bio, biodynamic farm and I like to grow a little bit of vegetables every year just because, and I like to dry farm them. Uh, this uh, asparagus is remnants of my seed grown asparagus that I had through here. I had this all vegetables when the trees were like tiny because all these trees were, you know, small, <laughs> small three gallon mango trees and stuff, MB trees. <clears throat> I kept it as lawn. Obviously, we don't do that anymore. Um, this looks so much better than the lawn, and it's like so full of nutrients and contains all kinds of life, which is the nutrients <clears throat> above and below ground. Just gonna go look at the sugar apples, see if I could see the wood ducks, but I can't. I can't. They're hiding. Gotta get my clippers. Get my clippers. I don't show my little uh, miniature zebu cows often, but they're just like so special 
to our fertility and our happiness here, our, our, our spiritual and sensual pleasure that we get from the cows, the miniature zebus. They're just so, I don't know, they're just such incredible animals. So we apply their manure every day, year round. And I haven't like done fresh cow manure in a garden since I think the 70s. Fresh, just fresh cow manure. <clears throat> so I'm excited to see how the seeds go. I'm using all old seeds that I have, so who knows if I was gonna get the clippers, but I guess I could uh, do without. It's not that much fruit. I never talk about this other koi muk tree. This, you know, this is the one I planted in front of my door. It's my favorite fruit. Um, uh, this one produced one fruit last year. It's a seed grown tree. It's a, I, I've had this tree for like 10 years <clears throat> and I planted it here when it was, you know, this big seedling. Six inches, probably. I think it had two leaves on it. <laughs> And put it in the lawn and put wood chips around it and didn't water it. <clears throat> it survived. She's a survivor. It did not produce fruit this year. It flowered and fruited, but the drought and it's right here on this mode path adjacent to the mode path that has that affects it i'm sure and um but it's a good tree probably next year it'll produce fruit it could take a, a year off i just spent nine years getting that thing to fruit and finally produced a fruit last year so <laughs> <laughs> tropical fruit is a uh... <clears throat> I don't know, it's a long-term hobby, I guess. I see a, a, a Garcinia intermedia is on there. Oh, I see some big ones up there too. So I didn't even see those before. It seems like it's a continuous producer here them and drop mangosteen. This is a, a fruiting cacao, seed grown cacao, dry farmed. Everything's dry farmed, we're biodynamic, so we just apply biodynamic compost and we grow our, our animals holistically uh, on pasture. I give them a little hay at night when they're locked in the barn. that I buy. That's it, that's the input we bring here. And then uh, pine shavings for bedding. <clears throat> that's what it looks like. This is what I apply a day, year round. Spread throughout the farm. That's from their, their, uh, their barn. I scoop it out every day. And drop it throughout the farm. You have to pay attention to weird uh, some weird uh, rules for manures like waiting 120 days from after you drop it if, if there's any fruit on the to be harvested, you have to wait 120 days. <clears throat> so, gotta follow stuff like that. But it's pre pretty easy to do, because you could see the fruit. Um, and everything fruits at different times. The Santal tree got, it didn't, this one didn't like the drought. 
But this was like a bad compacted area before of the lawn, so, oh. I really can't complain about my job. Why was I talking about the Santal fruit? <clears throat> this is a cutting I did last year. Look at that big ass spider in there. that fruit. <laughs> I'm not going to get this one. And this one. I think this one's world's best. Very sweet. I'm sure they're full of anthocyanins. Uh, you know, the pigments that are responsible for brain health and anti-aging. <clears throat> that spider, though. Okay, where was I going? Uh, got sidetracked. I was going to go over to the... Uh, I was looking at the Santal and I saw a mulberry. So yeah, it got hit by the drought, but it just came back. I have two other Santals that are, I don't know, four times this size that didn't get affected by the drought that were planted during the same time. <clears throat> the Santals have not fruited here yet, so there's that. Supposed to be a good fruit. I could use the leaves for teas. This is an Inga spectabilis tree that did not like the drought. That is damages from the drought. It got affected more by the drought than it got affected by the the freeze ever. All the rest of our Ingus pectabilis trees are fine. No, no drought damage whatsoever. It's bizarre. But this was a was one of the worst spots in the entire yard. It was a big, wide, open lawn. There was a big lawn pond that would sit here, hot, real hot water. You know, because it was mowed for. It looked beautiful with the big trees, but <laughs> yeah, wasn't very healthy. Thank God I figured out how to uh, work with nature to uh, grow these rare tropical fruit trees from seed. That's a seed grown tree. It's a mango. This is a, I think a, one of my favorite mangoes. Uh -huh. Who are you? You are orange sherbet yep definitely one of my favorite mangoes there's an orange sherbet tree right there that produced tons of fruit last year tons of fruit this year this orange sherbet produced fruit last year but did not produce fruit this year and not tons there's one of our miko lemons just started fruiting for the first time this year uh, small crop. The birds didn't affect this one. Uh -huh. I'm working my way over to the sugar apples. Over by the sugar apples. This is a citrus that hasn't fruited one of the seeds and this is also where a chain link fence was for since the 80s 
And knowing what I know now about what they do around here, I guarantee they were spraying glyphosate all along this for a long time. Chain link. Mm hmm. This was our only casualty from the drought, this lychee tree. And it was a tiny little lychee tree. Obviously, it's a compacted area, it's still monocrop lawn started getting some flowers and herbs around it because I put wood chips and everything else around here but all the way around it it's just monocrop short grass three years after I stopped more than three years since I stopped mowing it oh, look at these lemons I'm not gonna get stunned by the Miko lemon even the the uh Monarchs like the Miko lemon. Is that a monarch? Pretty sure it is. Mm-hmm. Stunning trees. It's amazing they're four-year-old trees from seed. <clears throat> from our fruit trees from our our forest we have in Brevard County. Mm-hmm. In Miko. It's like on a sand dune. It produces these huge, giant lemons. It's just amazing freaking plant. And doesn't seem to have any trouble with the anything except these little peck marks. That's from birds pecking them when it has the fruit is green. Uh, the You know, starlings and stuff, the blackbirds. But I like the blackbirds, so they must be, need something off the tree. I can't ship the fruit anyway. It's a greening. I don't know the rules. There's like many, so I don't even want to get into it. So I'm just going to plant a forest of Miko lemons here <clears throat> between the uh, other trees. So here's the the sugar apples. Yeah, I missed a few. I haven't been coming by looking at them. I needed to do this. I haven't done this in a while. Look how good it looks. Come on. Back to one. <laughs> okay, focus on the sugar apples. And maybe some Adamoyas. And... I wish an llama, but I don't think that's gonna probably happen. So there's none on these trees that I can see. Sugar apple season stopped like, I don't know. It's definitely been more than a month. But it was the first year we were able to sell sugar apples off our trees and hopefully they just get better and better as the trees get older. The Atamoya tree that produced quite a bit of fruit this year. Priestly Atamoya, it's good fruit. Um, I love it. And this stuff's all dry farmed year round, 24 7. There's little tiny fruit on there. Um, ah, there it is. That's like the size of a, a little bit, a nickel. Maybe a quarter, almost a quarter. That's good, because I know, yeah, our trees at the, at our other property are older than these trees. Maybe that's why they produce two crops a year. Could it be true? Because they're in Brevard County and we get two crops off those trees. They don't produce a lot, but I don't give them any inputs. It's not a biodynamic farm, it's just a, sand dune with some weeds and some trees on it and a shack <clears throat> little forest some turtles tortoises Nico lemon grows there oh yeah we got lots of sh younger sugar apples but i know i missed a lot because there was a bunch of sugar <laughs> sugar apples 
on these trees. The last time I looked at them, I just reach a limit and people stop asking for them and it's like, okay, that's it. This is a Elama uh, tree, a Nona diversifolia that um, has been flowering, but I don't see any flowers or fruit on it. So it's not uh, there. See, I missed some fruit up here. There's fruit on this tree. It looks not ready. That one looked like it turned black. It's like I didn't come pick it or cut it. Um, it's the Adamoya tree that I thought had some flowers set on it, um, some fruit set, but I don't see any. I think this is a, a priestly Adamoya. There's a little flower, but it looks like it's gonna drop off. It's not gonna set fruit. Yeah, this little paradise here. I mean, <clears throat> that one's like almost ready, but those things, it looks like they got more black spots when it, the te temperature cooled off a little bit. So our beach house, Sugar apples don't get any uh, black spots on them. But it's okay. Every year it gets better and better. It's not like it gets worse and worse. <laughs> That's the beauty of this paradise uh, with the trees of purpose. Um, That you don't even have to water. It's just, just shocking. The trees look good. That's a sugar apple tree there. That's a sugar apple tree there. So like a couple of pigeon peas there. You can't really see. There they are. With the banana. <clears throat> There's a lot going on in here. Ginger, banana, mango. This is a very heavy producing mango tree. That's right underneath this giant pine tree. I mean, like right under it. Probably not the best place to plant a mango tree because the branches could fall and kill it, but that's where it is. a mango. The mangoes look good. This is an Adamoya that's never really uh it's a Geffner Adamoya. It's never really thrived in this location. But this is again monocrop lawn highly compacted. Because <clears throat> it should be a lot bigger than that. And then this is where the freeze happened. You know, mango, mangoes that froze hap, happened where it was the the ground was the most compacted, where you could, where I could identify the ground was compacted. <clears throat> oh, so beautiful here. Anyway, this is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I hope you have a beautiful day.